Hello, my name is Dr. James Santa from the Common Mission Project. I'm the Director of International Academics, and I'm happy to bring you Concept 4. So in the previous concept, in Concept 3, we talked about beneficiary discovery, and we had already covered the right-hand side of the mission model canvas. Well, in this concept, we're going to be bringing you the left-hand side of the canvas, otherwise known as feasibility. So we're going to dive right into this. So the first thing is, I know another eye chart, as we've seen with a couple of definition slides here, but again, having the really good foundational understanding of what's here is really important. So I'm going to read some of this to you. So feasibility in the context of mission-driven entrepreneurship and the H4 methodology refers to the assessment of whether a proposed solution or product can be effectively and practically implemented, considering the available resources, technology, stakeholder access, and operational constraints. It evaluates the likelihood of successfully developing, producing, and deploying the innovation while maintaining it, its intended impact on the target beneficiaries. What is the largest hurdle related to the problem sponsor and domain is eva evaluated by the beneficiary discovery. This section tests whether an innovation project is possible given the timeframe, resources, and key stakeholder support. It is oriented to ensure that the proposed solution not only addresses desired problem and value proposition, but is also grounded in realistic expectation and capabilities. So what this box, uh, these boxes, I should say, this section of the mission model canvas is really getting to is, do you have the resources that you're actually going to need to to deploy a solution? Is it feasible? So the resources, whether it's human capital, physical assets, intellectual capac uh, capital, whatever it may look like, is it there? Do you have the right people in place from a key partner perspective to actually see this through? And as, a, as I've mentioned in concept one, and I'll say it again here is, from a key partner perspective, one of the best first names you can have here is your sponsor and the sponsoring organization. Uh, just a little insider trading there in terms of getting started. So as a reminder, again, we're looking at the three boxes on the left-hand side of the canvas. This is the, the, the primary area, the only area is really for uh, feasibility in the mission model canvas, and that are your, your uh, key partners, your key activities, and your resources. So what I have here is an example of key partners, and I've pulled this from the defense domain. But, you know, if you look at that graphic on the right hand side, it's just simply changing the name from DOD to, say, if you're working Department of State, to DOS or to an organization that's working maybe in, in uh, ocean and climate and climate research. So what this is showing from a key partner perspective, and we do have a definition there, but I'm not going to read this one. I'll spare you is really understanding that from within ecosystem, key partners and potential partners come from a wide variety of different key areas. So um, if you're working with uh, with a government agency, for example, there's going to be uh, contractors that are part of this. It's, even in the in, a, in the impact space, there's not necessarily just one organization that's doing all the work. There are partners that are involved with bringing uh, new policy, new products, new innovations to market. So they could be an external contractor. And remember that depending on what it is that you're doing here, is this contractor going to be winning out on more work? Or are they going to be losing something? Uh, is it possible to turn one of these contractors from uh, somebody who could be a key partner into a, a saboteur? Absolutely. So you got to keep that in mind. Um, if you're working within the organization, so we have the DOD here, are these new requirements that are going to be, they're going to have to feel, there's new technologies, new policies that they're going to have to be integrated that involve training and sustainment, something that you're going to have to consider as part of your discovery work and ultimately what an MVP is going to look like. And then lastly, from a commercial perspective, um, so there are opposing goals oftentimes when you're working in an emission-driven organization. Companies exist to make money. That is their primary focus. And we can get into the merits of, of uh, you know, capitalism and those kind of things, but just be aware that when you're mission driven and you're having your mission achievement and, and maybe life saved or the positive impact on, on climate being your goals, uh, commercial entities, while they may have goals that are um, positive, they really do have to make money. So it's something to keep in mind. And depending on what you're doing, are these goals uh, at odds with what industry is looking for you to do? So keep that in mind as you're looking for potential partners. Uh, here's another definition chart for your key activities, and I will read a bit of this one. So they embody the vital tasks, operations, and actions that a mission-driven organization, a government project, or a private sector enterprise must enter to undertake to successfully execute its unique value proposition uh, and fulfill its mission. These activities are not ordinary or commonplace, but are instead those specific operations that differentiate the entity and underpin its distinctiveness. These activities provide the operational foundation that enables the organization to generate, deliver, and maintain the intended impact on its beneficiaries through its distinct products, services, or interventions. These are not merely routine activities, but are strategic and operational processes that are integral to the entity's uniqueness. So 
For government projects, key activities refer to the particular tasks and operations necessary to achieving the specific objectives of the project, often oriented towards delivering a unique public benefit or service. So this is what your key activities are. There are very specific things that you have to get right that your team has to be able to deliver on in order for the value proposition for these beneficiaries to be realized. And lastly, from a definitional perspective, you have key resources. And these are the essential assets, inputs, and capabilities that are unique to a mission-driven organization or government entity in successfully carrying out its key activities, delivering its value proposition, and achieving its mission. These distinct resources enable the organization to create, deliver, and maintain the desired impact on its beneficiaries through its product, services, or interventions. So lastly, I think one of the easiest ways of being able to discuss this is actually showing you what one looks like. Now, if you recall from the previous concepts, uh, specifically in concept two, where we had the right side of the canvas, well, here's the corresponding left side of the canvas. And we'll see at the end of our viability concept, we'll see what this looks like in terms of a total picture. But what you'll want to keep in mind here is you're seeing where the correlation between those key partners and the activities that they would have to undertake. So keep that in mind. See that when you're looking at key resources, we are talking about human capital, about technology, about the different resources that they are going to need as a team in order to deliver the value proposition. And then key activities talks about those activities that that team must do in order to facilitate an adoption of their value proposition. So that is the end of this concept, and we'll see you on the next one.